In this episode of Automel Answers, we take another look at the flashing blue light of death. Nah, just kidding. Uh, in this episode, we're going to go back and continue the first part of what to do when you have the flashing blue light for no loop signal. In this episode, we're going to get more in depth and show you how to find the break underground in the wire. If you haven't already, we strongly urge you to go back and watch our original video, The Flashing Blue Light and Where to Start, where we show you how to check your, uh, your power coming through from your outlet, your transform, your low voltage cable into the back of your charging station and out to your wires to eliminate any issues that might be there that you didn't think of. And that will get you up to speed and ready for this next part that we are going to show you now. Okay, so you followed everything that we did and our we showed you in our first video, you know, um, if you got the flashing blue light in your charging station where you check the power uh, at your outlet, coming through the transformer, through the little voltage cable, out of your charging station, and then swapping the wires around to see which wires are good, which wires are bad. And now this is the second part of that. You still got the flashing blue light. Now what do you do after you've done all that? You've got it narrowed down. You have a good idea of where the break is at. So what do you do now? All right. I'm going to show you the easy way oh, yes. here. Here's um, what you're going to do next. You are going to use one of these tools that sends a tone through the wire. This is the one here that we use. I don't even know how you pronounce that name. I'm not even going to try. You're seeing it right there. So um, K-O-L-S-O-L an FO2. You can look that up. Uh, this actually came right from Husqvarna. They gave these to us at a dealer meeting. Then they sent some more out in the mail, stuff like that. Um, you know, you, you can pick one of these up on Amazon, um, uh, hardware stores, uh, electrical supply places, different places have them. You know, search the internet if you can't find one at your local shops and you'll be able to find one. But what this does is this sends a a tone through the wire and then you use the other part to actually listen for the tone when you don't have a tone anymore you've found the break in the wire real simple uh, a lot of people struggle with using one of these and i'm not quite sure why but we're going to show you here how easy it is to use one of these so this is what's inside the box you have your your um, soft case that you can put everything in and then this is the um, transmitter here real simple to use off, test the battery, battery's good, and cable scan, that's your on. That's gonna send the pulse through the line. Here, you're going to hook these wires, one to the end of the wire that you're testing, and this one here to a ground. And when we say a ground, that means all you need is like a screwdriver or something metal to jam into the ground and clip this on it. Again, real easy, self-explanatory there. Um, comes with some earbuds, and they are to go in the side of the receiver, so not everybody has to listen to the racket being put off by this. The receiver here has a flashlight on it, um, right there. See that? And this is, again, real easy to use. You have on and off, and you have your volume, which you'll probably have to keep adjusting so you can hear the tone as your um, length of wire gets longer or you get farther away from the source, you know, you're going to need um, a louder, a louder signal response there. Um, this part here just hangs down and this is what picks up the signal being transmitted from the transmitter. Again, real easy, uh, pretty self-explanatory and it even comes with instructions. I think we probably lost ours, but real easy to use there are usually instructions with them especially when you get one brand new but we'll show you here how to use it um, so here's all you got to do to use this um, wire testing kit you're gonna have your transmitter here pull off the wire that you've determined to be broken or have a break in it and connect your positive to that wire from your your boundary system as you can see there you want to be metal on metal we open this clip up so we can make sure we get a good connection. And then the other side is your ground and you're gonna connect it to something metal that you can just jam in the ground there. Uh, we use a screwdriver because we don't want anything with paint or rust on it. We wanna have a good connection from our gator clip to whatever object is that we're using for a ground. Now that, now that you've got everything all hooked up with your transmitter, 
Now you're going to use the receiver. We got it powered on. And that transmitter is going to send out a tone through your wire that you have the transmitter connected to. Now it's going to be annoying. So that's why they have the headphones so you can fine tune this and you can listen a little closer without it being so loud and annoying. Um, this is what you're going to listen for. Yeah, <laughs> not too enjoyable, but it gets the job done. So you're going to let this black part right here dangle just above the ground, and that's going to pick up the signal, and that means you're not going to have to be bending over and constantly prodding into the ground like you would with an in-wall tester. So you're just going to start out by going out along where you believe the boundary is, listening for your tone. And you just keep going out, following along. Until you lose that tone. Now you are going to have to adjust the volume as you go. Because as the amount of wire or the distance away from the charging station that you get, the signal is going to weaken. So you're going to have to keep modifying and adjusting the volume on this thing. So... So there you can hear our signal going away. We have the volume the entire way up. So this is a pretty good indication that we have an issue right here. We can, we can get the signal right here. So you can hear that signal and now it starts to go away. And then there it's gone completely. So this is where we want to look for our, our broken wire at. Because we know there's definitely an issue of some sort in this area right here. Because when we back up, we can pick up the signal again. You can hear it there. But right in here, we lose it. You can hear that signal diminish as you get close to this spot right here, and then it goes away completely. No matter where you move this to, you have a hard time picking anything back up consistent. So either you've got a bend in your wire that it goes a different direction, which if we go out this way, we're getting nothing unless we go back the other way, which we came from. When we go out this way, we've still got nothing. So evidently that is where our break in our wire is because all around here we've got nothing until we get back over to where we came from. This way, nothing. This way, we're picking up the signal where we came from again. See how that works? Back from where we stopped with the signal. Over here, nothing. Signal, nothing. Signal, nothing. So we'll dig into the ground here and see what we find. Now here's our broken wire right here. This is the side where we have the tone coming in and this one over here is the side that um, doesn't have the tone going through it anymore because obviously it's cut. 
So to give you an idea here, now that the wire is exposed, this is what we got going on. We're going to get our tone. You can hear the tone get stronger as you get closer to the wire. Hear how that tone weakens when you get away from the wire? And then nothing. That's where our break is at, where we've got nothing around here. You can tell that there is nothing there, no way for the tone to get through. Come back to the wire. And then nothing. So that's really all there is to it. You just got to keep listening for the tone. The tone will get stronger um, as you get closer to the wire. When you have no tone anymore, then you have no connectivity in your wire. So that's where your break is going to be, somewhere in that area. Um, one thing you want to do is when you're digging in there to check the wire to see if that is where your broken spot is. You don't want to get too rammy and end up breaking the wire in a spot where it wasn't already broken and thinking you solved the problem. Um, one thing I like to do is I like to take a, a, a screwdriver and just jab into the ground and then lightly pry up and you want to do this you know, if you're you're losing tone out here, so you want to do that back here where you still have good tone. We have a pretty good idea where the wire is at. So you would just jab in there and then gently just pry up. This way you're not creating a big hole in the, in the yard and tearing up your lawn. Um, also, when you pry that up, then as you can see here, you can just lay that over. And you're going to get a good idea of where the other side would be. You know, just come back a few inches from that. Do the same thing, pry up over there, and then you'll have your your two ends where the break is at. Now, after you repair the broken spot in your wire, rather than going back right away, plugging in the charging station wires and everything, to see if you got the green light, while you're there, just take the, the receiver from your tester and just see if the, if the tone goes across that spot where it was broken before. So you know the tone's carrying across there, so your wire's good there. Now what you can do is go back to your charging station, plug in the wire, feeling confident that that area is fixed, and if your light comes back on and it's green, then you're good to go. If it comes back on and it's flashing blue, then you know you need to keep searching for another spot in that wire. But you know everything from your charging station up to here was good, and you can keep following along the wire again until you lose the tone again and do the same thing. Now, where we spliced this at, you can see we had to use two splices, which is pretty much what you're going to have to do anytime you splice this wire because it's pulled so tight. As soon as there's a cut, it pulls to either side of the cut and leaves a gap in between there. So you want to put a little bit of wire in between, use two of the weatherproof connectors there, and having that little bit of slack in there is actually going to help you because if you've had this wire installed by a, um, a dealer or some kind of professional installer and they use the machine to put the wire right in the ground, there is a lot of tension on that wire. It pulls it very, very tight. So when it splits like that, it's going to pull it back a good ways. Now that you've got a little bit of slack in there, your whole system, at least in this you know, general area right here is going to have a little bit more give to it. So, um, say you come through here with a vehicle or something like that, 
it's going to give just a little bit more than it would have before. So don't worry about having that extra slack in there. Keep your connections close to each other. So at least that way, if you do have a problem, you know, hey, I did splice the wire here. Let me just go out and check and make sure they're still good. And I got a good connection there. You know, when you pull one of these up, you're going to know the other one's right there within a few inches. So you're not going to have to go 10 feet down the line and pull up another one. And always use good weather proof weather resistant connectors these are the ones from 3m that are packed with grease that husqvarna gives you in the installation kit um, you can purchase them on amazon or ebay or wherever else because they are 3m they're not actually husqvarna original parts or anything like that so they're out there uh if your dealer doesn't have them and you're in a pinch you know amazon two days most of the time you can get them or shop around a local hardware store or electrical supply store and you can pick them up all right we got our wires all patched back up stapled back down we got our solid green led in our charging station meaning our wires are good to go but we're not done yet we got a few more things that we're going to help you out with here and explain to you so just sit tight and just keep watching the whole way to the end okay here's a recap of uh the first video we did to show you how we figured out which wire we needed to test there, um, basically it's, it's pretty simple. As we always tell you, you want to take your guide wire or guide wires and swap them out for boundary wires. So here in this system, we have the one guide wire, the blue wire, and our boundary wire coming off of this side of the charging station is orange. Off that side, we have purple. So what you would do is leave the orange wire, the boundary wire on this side, Take your guide wire, unhook it from the back of the charging station, and hook it up in place of the boundary wire on that side. When you do that, you'll have a green light there because you have connectivity the whole way through this. There's, there's no breaks in this wire, so you'll get a green light. So you know that side's good. If your break was on this side, then you would get the flashing blue light, which would tell you it's probably on this side or you got a problem with your guide wire too. But at any rate, this side here, you hook that up. You get a solid green light, you know you're good. So, then you will take your guide wire, move it over in place of the boundary wire on this side, hook up your boundary wire on that side. If you get a green light, you know that side over there is good, all the way through this guide wire back to the charging station. You get the flashing blue light, if it continues, you know your brake is over in here somewhere. Somewhere between the guide wire, where it connects into the, the boundary wire, and a charging station on that side because if it, it, like in a case like this you you know that you have a good signal through your guide wire and through this boundary wire on this side your light turned green so all this is good so you know your guide wire is good your boundary wire is good up to where it connects into that guide wire now you've narrowed it down you've got a flashing blue light between your guide wire and this side of the boundary over here coming back to your charging station so this wire here is where you want to hook your tester up to because you know the brake is on that side somewhere you don't want to hook it up to this one and have to go the whole way around the system to find it over there you know it's on that side so hook it up right here if you have a second guide wire you know say that comes out to out across over to here you could also then take that guide wire and hook it up over here on this side of the charging station so that would narrow it down even further you would know that okay it's not between here and here, it's more down here and, and the charging station. You see what I mean there? Let me, uh, let me just grab a, a marker here. So if you have another guide wire that comes out through here, like say to there, you could also swap that one out. So you, you could, uh, you can hook up both guide wires as boundary wires. If you do that, it's going to show you that there's a green light here because you don't have a brake and any of this stuff. So you'll know that your, your brake and your wire is somewhere between this guide wire and here. And you can double check that by putting this guide wire on this side of the charging station and having that side of the, the boundary hooked up. You'll get the flashing blue light. You know it's over there in that corner. So again, unhook your wire here. Hook your tester up to this wire because you know that's where your brake is at and you'll take the shortest distance around there to get to your brake. This is where people often mess up when they go to get a tester of some sort to try to find the brake in their wire. 
this right here is the tester that we used. And you saw it had this, this long cord on here that would hang down. So we could just walk along with that hanging down and we could pick up the tone coming from the transmitter through the receiver. What people end up doing is because this is the first thing they come to or the first thing they find, or maybe they got one of these laying around, is they will try to use one of these. Will this work? Yeah, but it's going to take a lot of extra effort. Why do I say that? Well, there you go. That's all the further you can get away from it, really. Um, you know, where this one has the long cable hanging down and receiver end down here to pick up the tone. So you don't have to be bent down. There's a lot of times you're trying to use this. You're going to have to go along bent down or crawling on the ground and even prob this uh probe this thing down in there or pry down into the ground. Um, maybe even dig up the wire to see if you're getting good signal there. Give you a, give you an idea here of this. Um, one thing cool about though is one like this, you got a solid tone, which we'll show you here. That's the solid tone right there that'll send through the wire. But then you can also do alternating Which is a little bit easier to pick up and keep track of. But uh, we'll get back to our solid tone here. And we'll turn up the volume the whole way. And you can see here, it's going to get pretty loud right away. And then it's going to fade out. That's it. We're like a foot away. We're like a foot away from the wire. And it's already, you know, maxed out. You can barely hear anything other than some feedback through the speaker. So you figure if your wire is three or four inches below the ground, heck, even two inches below the ground, you know, you got that insulation on top of it. Um, you know, that's why I say you're going to crawl around on the ground with one of these things. You can get it to work. It's just going to be more challenging and uh, take a lot more effort. So you're better off just saving your money and buying the right tool for the job pick up one like this that way you're not going to be hunched over the whole time walking around your yard um it's just the easier way to go about it that's why we recommend this one this is why husqvarna gives this one out to their dealers at dealer meetings uh really just a, a basic simple tester and an easy way to find a break in your wire if you just use the tool properly there it is. That is our second part of how to find the broken wire that is causing your flashing blue light in the charging system. Hopefully this answers pretty much all your questions. I know it still can be difficult if this is your first time trying to look for something like this. Make sure that you get a good tester, one that is used for locating broken wires underground. Not in a wall, not a network cable or anything like that, but underground. That is what you're going to need. This model FO2 Perfect choice to go with. That's what the majority of us use out in the field. Uh, there are bigger, fancier, more expensive models out there, but this one will get the job done if you just use it correctly. So as always, hope you learned something here. Hope you enjoyed this video. We get tons of feedback from you guys, and uh, we really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's been great to help you guys out with this stuff. You know, we get a lot of emails. We get a lot of comments. Um, keep them coming. You know, we don't know what to put out there without you guys responding. So anything else you guys are having problems with, let us know. We'll try to get around to doing something like this to, uh, explain it and help you out and help you get back up and running. Um, be sure to pass the channel around, pass the videos around. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe and keep checking back because we've always got new stuff coming out. Thanks for watching.